let me show you how I went about building this thing. Um, I've got all the switches and things installed, so it's kind of after the fact when I started making these videos, but like I said, I'm using this thin plywood, eighth inch plywood. This is, I think, birch, sand pine you can get. Um, they have maple, different things. Um, I just go to Home Depot and go to their project boards and buy like a two by four sheet of it. And they, may, they might even sell them smaller than that. Um, and then I use just some three quarter inch, this is just pine board, but you can get it to the oak or something stronger if you want, but it seems to be fine. It's nothing really heavy. So this pine board does pretty well. And I just kind of cut it to size. Let's take a look right here. You can see I basically, all the wires are in there, really kind of taking up some space, but I just kind of framed it out, you know, gave it some structure. And then the screws go in there and just support it. So it's kind of simple, you know, I've got one large piece on the top, just one large piece on top. And then the side panel right here drops down. Let's zoom it out here, this back panel. The way it works for me is at my desk, I have a, a wraparound desk. So I sit and the, the L comes out this way. So I have this tuck kind of underneath of there. Um, it works pretty good, but you can make this panel however you want, basically. And then it sticks out the length here, and my throttle goes right in there. So it matches the size. I measured it so it would be the perfect size there. So as I'm using it, I've got all my verbal switches, and I can reach around to the side, over here, down in front, and everything's spaced out. And, you know, I can do it by feel and VR. So not, no, no two switches the same or too close to each other. I always end up using these as light panel potentiometers. And since they're further up, you know, it's further to reach. They're actually the things I use the least. Maybe even the selective jettison I use least than that, less than that. But just having different types of switches is what really makes the difference for me in VR. So you can see, I just went ahead and painted it. To get these lines, it's pretty simple. I just spray painted the whole thing primer. Just use some basic Rust-Oleum primer. And then let that dry fully. Got a little bit of quarter inch. I think it's quarter inch, yeah, maybe it's, yeah. Uh, tape, and taped off the edges. And then sprayed it with, I think this is a really good finish. I found this chalky finish paint. Gives a super matte texture. And after it was done, I put this matte sealer on it. A few coats, thin coats of that, and it worked really well. It's got a pretty good texture. Nice, it's flat, which is what I was going for. I'm trying to go for like the two types of metal color. You can get this stuff in whatever, you can make it black. Like it's my prior version of this extension was black, but I wanted some a different color. So that's what I went with. So the way this thing will mount is inside the Monster Tech mount, I bought some extra of these channel nuts. I can't remember I can't remember exactly what they're called, but I'll put a link to them. I got them on Amazon. They're exactly the same thing that Monster Tech sends. So I just slide them in there. I'm actually not even going to use these two. I'm just going to mount it with these and then seat the throttle in there and it's going to hold it just fine. And um, it's got to line up your holes. I didn't do the greatest job of lining up the holes somehow on this one. They're a little bit off center. <laughs> but put the bolts through there and it holds it in place. The other cool thing is I am going to be on top putting this panel on there. All right? So I did the same thing. What I did here is on the bottom I just got some of these brackets. Right? These here. Got them at Home Depot. And I just took a, took a hacksaw and cut it off. I had to drill the holes a little bit bigger. And then I'm using some furniture T-nuts. They look like this. Right? And so I drill, pre-drill the hole. And you can see here, just bang them in there. And from underneath, take your screw and put it in there. And then this will slide just like that. And screw it on the side. And that'll be up top. This will be on there. So I'll put the whole thing together and show you what it looks like combined. Obviously, 
I still have to finish wiring this one, but I figured I'll show you guys the process there of how to wire and how this thing works. So I'll be right back. All right, so now that I have it all put together, you can basically see the concept, right? It mounts on top, gives me a little underneath tuck, so as I'm using this, you know, throttle, got easy access to my landing gear, gonna end up probably putting flaps right here, master arm, make this, maybe light switches, these two are gonna be rotaries, there'll be two buttons up here, this will be my hook long toggle. And then it's just real easy access. You can see when you're playing, like you really have to reach around for the rotaries for these. I mean, not the rotaries. These are the uh, potentiometers. So I end up using these for all lights, basically. But like easy access, they're right here. Fast to grab. It's all kind of central, and you can feel out what's what. And I don't even look. I just reach around to the side for these buttons. I end up using this for pause and speed up, so forth. Um, it's really convenient the way it ends up working out. All with the headset on. You have to do it by feel. It's a pretty sweet setup.